in all electronic devices, heat has a negative effect, allowing system to run for longer periods in high temperatures can decrease the longevity and reliability of devices and even irreversibly damage the system. Let's suppose the following first scenario. Your quad or your plane is on the table and you do some maintenance. The video transmitter is on and it is set on the power level on which you fly. But without any airflow, the video transmitter heats up and it will be damaged or your VTX lifetime and reliability will decrease. An easy solution to solve this problem is to use the six lighted push buttons from the station to set different power levels on your VTX, like in this case. So each time when you test, improve or do some maintenance on the quad or plane, set your power level to the minimum value. When you go on the field to fly, set the power level to the required value. In this mode, you will protect your VTX. In the second scenario, you fly and you crash your quad or plane, and the plane or quad is somewhere in the field, but you do not know where. Without any airflow, the video transmitter hits up and it will shut down or be damaged. So you lose the option of looking into your goggle to see the surroundings, or to use a directional patch antenna to track down an approximative position. Moreover. A VTX on a high power will drain your battery quicker and you will not have enough time to find your quad. So the solution is the same. After the crash, set the VTX emission power to the minimum value and from time to time you can increase the power to find your quad. In the third scenario, you cannot fly your plane or quad mainly because you have to wait for the GPS to get a 3D lock which in some situation can take minutes. Moreover, the VTX heats up during all of this time and it will damage, shut down or jumps out of the frequency. To solve this issue, after you power up the plane or quad, set the VTX power to the minimum value, way to have a 3D lock and after that configure the power value to the one used when you fly, by pressing only one button. So, to be able to change the power of your plane or drone remotely, you have an important requirement. You need an additional channel to do that. Several configurations must be done at the level of the station and on the flight controller that runs Betaflight or INEF. And more, you need to make some specific hardware connection. First, go to the model editor and here to the input screen. Second, go to an empty field and configure a new input. In my case, it is configured and it is this line. But basically, move up and down and insert an input name in this field and the line name in the second field. For example, put here a specific name to avoid confusion sometime later when you'll come back to make other modification. What is really important is the source. Here, by using a specific input element from your station, you will make the selection. Like in this case, when I use the SB switch. In our case, push any of these buttons and you'll make the correct selection. Now return and go to the mixer tab to map the station's input to the channel output. So find an unused channel, in my case this was channel 11. And here, insert a name. In my case, the VTX is working 1, 25, 100, 200, 400 and 600 milliwatts. 
and for this reason I use here 25 milliwatts label that it is my first power level of my VTX. The source is a power input line defined previously. Leave other fields unchanged and go to the switch to select the physical button to activate this mixer line. In my case, it is a first button, but you can also choose another button. In the same mode, define the state of the other six buttons on the mixer screen. Now let's check if it is working or not. Push the model button and go to the channel monitor. And here go to the 11 channel and check if it's working. and it is working flawless. This was all here. To change the VTX power remotely, the VTX must be connected to the flight management unit. There are two main protocols, Smart Audio and Tramp, based on which the flight controller can adjust the video transmitter settings. So, a VTX capable of communicating with the controller can be configured via the OSDU menu, as you well know. Here you have the connection for the VTX that support the TRAM protocol. Every video transmitter, compatible with one of these two protocols, has a dedicated wire for communication with the controller. This wire, the green one, must be connected to a TX pin of any free UART port on the flight controller. Now we go to a VTX that supports the Smart Audio protocol. In the same mode as in the previous case, we must connect the power lines, the video signal, the yellow wire here, and TBS Smart Audio pin to a TX pin of any free UART port of the flight controller. In this specific case, we have UART number 1. As you know, up to this point, one port must be configured as Smart Audio or TRAM protocol for iNav or Betaflight to be able to communicate with your VTX. So, first open the Betafly configurator and check into the Ports tab to see if you have configured the Smart Audio or TRAM protocol associated with the corresponding port where the VTX is connected. As a direct result of this fact, the Flight Management Unit can communicate with your VTX. In my case, the VTX is connected to the WART port number 1. Now, go to the Receiver tab to check on which AUX channel the buttons are connected. Here we have the AUX channel number 7. Now we must note the value of the channel associated with each button of your station. So for the first button I have 988. For the second button I have 1193 and so on. Next, go to the command line interface and here we will use the VTX command to make an association between a specific range of value from an AUX channel with a specific VTX band, VTX channel and VTX power. So, each time when you are with your AUX channel value in this specific range, you will set the VTX band, VTX channel and VTX power with these specific values presented here. The first value is a recording index that starts each time with zero. The second is the aux channel from the receiver tab. Here you have only one constraint. This value must be less by one than the value presented in the receiver tab. In my case I have the aux channel number seven and here I will put each time value six. The VTX band and VTX channel will be set to this value on the VTX. But in our case, we want only to change the power of the VTX, so that we will put zero for both values. 
A zero value has a significance for the VTX to stay on the current predefined value. So, as a direct result, no change will take place here. For the output power, go to the VTX table. And here, use numbers starting with 1 and up to 4, 5 or 6, depending on the number of power levels of your VTX. So, put 1 for 25 milliwatts, 2 for 100 milliwatts, 3 for 200 milliwatts and so on. In the end, set the range of the aux channel. When your aux channel is on this range, the specific VTX band, VTX channel and VTX power specified here will be activated. So it is very easy. I will insert a new recording. Recording with the number 6 that will work with the aux channel number 7. that will use the predefined value for the VTX band and the VTX channel and I will set the power level value 5 what it is associated with 600 milliwatts in my case. This new rule will be activated when the aux channel number 7 will have a value in the range 900 up to 950. I know, uh, it is a stupid range, but I did this only for this demo. In the end, save all your modification. And you will see that the new VTX rule is active now. In iNav, check in the same mode as in Betaflight. First, the port where you have configured Smart Audio or Tram protocol associated with the VTX. And second, the values of the control channel generated by each button. Moreover, you must also get the channel number from the receiver tab. In my case, it is a channel 11. The iNav does not require other steps like in Betaflight, where the VTX command must be used. Here, go to the programming section of the iNav configurator. Now you must implement several logical conditions. If the channel value associated to the button is in the specific range, a specific action must be done. In my case, a particular VTX power must be set. Here I present the case for the second button. So if logic conditions 1 and 2 are true, then logic condition 0 will also be true. As a direct result, the logic condition 3 will be fired up for a short time and the VTX power level will be set to the second level, 100 mW in my case. In the same mode as in Betaflight, the power levels are numbers associated with the real powers. In my VTX, 1 is for 25 mW, 2 for 100 mW, 3 for 200 mW and so on.